Well, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now going to our next segment now, which is about the uh, second uh, lockdown on COVID-19 and an order by the Lagos State Government that all workers or most workers in the state should you know, stay at home. He's basically extended their work from home on order, asking them to you know, stay home, work from home, you know, limits fiscal contact as much as possible, yeah. extending this to February 1st, 2021. We'll be discussing this with a political affairs commentator, uh, Mr. Jilly Benton. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, everyone. All Good right. Morning. Yes, thank God you're in Lagos. So you know exactly uh, the state of things in the city. Lagos State has, you know, one of the highest cases of the virus in Nigeria at the moment. And uh, the, the government is saying, you know, people should work from home. You know, civil servants should work from home. And the PTF is saying that, you know, COVID-19 lockdown, a second one, is likely. What do you think about this? All right. We seem to have lost him. And uh, we'll uh, try to reconnect with Gina Benson to have uh, this conversation. Uh, the uh, conversation basically about, you know, possibilities of another lockdown, uh, maybe nationwide, maybe, you know, only in, in certain states. If you remember when the first one happened, it was only uh, in select states yes. that it was, uh, right. that it happened. Uh, uh, yeah, well, where we have Gilly Benson back online. Good morning. Morning. Yes. If you can hear me, I'm, I'm trying to get your thoughts on the order by the Lagos State Government for civil servants in the states to continue staying home till at least February 2021. Well, yes, um, it's better to be safe and sorry. That's how I would explain that. Um, those who have been asked to stay at home, well, at least from, their, from the first experience, Can you hear me? Yes, please yes, go we ahead. Can go we can ahead. hear you. Yeah, from the first experience, um, reports would have shown that um, there was success or it was, a, it was a good move. Don't forget that Lagos has been the epicenter and that Lagos has acted in the best way possible. I mean, it was one of the reasons why the governor of Lagos they got a lot of kudos on how the states managed the, the outbreak of the pandemic. So um, when the first lockdown happened and the civil servants were asked to stay away from work or work from home, if you like, I mean, that possibly helped to contain the spread. Nigeria appears to be doing well. Lagos appears to be doing not so badly. But with what we've heard about the second wave, um, the decision asking them to stay at home till, what, February 2021, which is, what, about three, three days away, is a step in the right direction. We need to do all we can to contain the spread. However, I think that the federal authorities should complement the efforts of the Lagos state government by stopping NIM now. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, still talking about that name. We know how several Lagosians, you know, have thronged the offices of the NIMC, you know, trying to register people in crowded places, uh, you, hardly any social distancing, hardly anybody wearing face masks. So really, is, is a second lockdown, is another lockdown imminent at this point? Even with the PTF, you know, saying that's very likely. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that that's what anybody wants to hear another lockdown. Uh, I was watching a BBC report sometime last week, and um, the, it's indicated that even the current lockdown in UK is not achieving the purpose of stopping the spread. So I don't think that the lockdown is a way to go. What the government should be doing is creating more awareness. And don't forget that there's a huge trust deficit in Nigeria between the, govern, um, the governed and the government. And that's because government has always acted not in the best interest of the people. So it appears with this name drama, government is approbating on one hand and reprobating on another hand. You're asking people to stay away from each other. You're asking people not to go out if there's no essential need. And now you have created a very essential need, one that has threats attached to it. So at the end of the day, it's Lagos that is, that is going to be bogged down by the crisis if the spread happens, if, if, the, what you call it, if the spread of the virus happens on account of people trying people desperate to get their um, name okay um, and i don't think that that's fair on Lagos. all right um jenna benson i i it's something that i had mentioned earlier is we being able to properly assess 
the amount of success we recorded during the first lockdown with slowing down the um, infection rate of COVID-19 in the country. So I want you to quickly start with that. Um, do you think that we should um, have proper analysis on how successful that one was before making a decision on taking another lockdown? Let's start with that. Well, yes, there should have been an analysis, but don't forget that events happened in quick succession after that. There's been a flurry of events, the most um, important one being NSAS. Um, even right after that, there were elections, tense elections in Edo in particular, and then later in Ondo State, and then came NSAS, and that enveloped everybody. At that point, everybody threw caution to the wind that um, SARS appeared to be a greater killer than coronavirus. And a lot of people have said that on a jocular note and on a very serious note. So yes, we should have done the analysis. The NCDC officials, Ministry of Health officials, working with WHO and at the various state levels should have done that. But we missed a golden opportunity in not doing that. Okay, and, and also uh, two days ago, uh, Bill Gates, um, one of the people who has championed, you know, loads of support for healthcare in Africa, um, you know, while he was being interviewed, made mention of why he thinks uh, COVID-19 vaccines shouldn't be the Nigerian government's main focus now, and we shouldn't be investing that much money in, um, you know, buying vaccines. He said instead that we should invest that money in fixing our healthcare. Um, so now let's get you to talk about that. Um, what levels of investment in healthcare would you have expected from the federal government in the last one year? We've dealt with this for one year. What level of investment in healthcare would you expect from the federal government that should in, you know, help us manage the situation better uh, and, of course, give us less reasons to be talking of another lockdown? Um, like in many sectors, a state of emergency ought to have been declared in the health sector. Don't forget that it was the pandemic that helped the secretary to the government of the federation to realize how bad our health system is confess that much before the national assembly members our president has been the number one um, tourist on medical issues and the pandemic has prevented a lot of people from traveling so if anything for enlightened self-interest you should have started to um, ensure that there's a lot of investments in that in that space and accelerated one at that from the Astro Rock Villa, which the wife of the president has told us cannot even treat basic, um, basic um, illnesses, to the national hospital, to the general hospitals, and um, the teaching hospitals. So a state of emergency and an accelerated one at that is what should be happening in the health sector, not building rails from one place to Maradi, which we don't need. Investment in the people, as Bill Gates has said time and again, is what we need. And do you see that likely, you know, to take place anytime soon? Do you, you know, expect that there would be those changes? I've heard people say that if COVID-19 doesn't teach us anything, you know, with regards to healthcare in Nigeria, then we may never learn our lessons. So do you, do you see that happening anytime soon? That state of emergency you've just mentioned? No, I don't see it happening because um, it's a case of same of the same and more of the same. Asking people to be patient, asking people to forbear with the people, and as the sun sets and rises, and we hear the same thing week in, week out. So I don't see that happen. I think we're stuck with this, and we may just leave it out. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just leave it at that. OK. Um, Osarege just mentioned a Bill Gates statement on, uh, on you know, talking about the healthcare and investment in it. So let's talk about epidemic preparedness. Really, we do need investment in our healthcare. But you go through the news and you can hardly find any single story talking about a new hospital the government has built from 2020 till now. This is very worrisome because what you see is federal government too. Federal government to set up isolation center. Federal government to do this. What's what actually is the government doing about this? If we're not setting up hospitals, you know, in every state in the country at the moment, what have we learned regarding epidemic preparedness? Um, I think the epidemic has taught us very little, as a people and as a government. Um, and asking for new hospitals to be built or new medical facilities is asking for too much. 
how about we ask that the existing ones be revamped or be renovated or be equipped? I know all the teaching hospitals, like I said, all the general hospitals, um, maternal and child care centers, primary health care centers. Let's first of all start with the existing instead of creating budgets or, or drawing up budgets to build new ones. If we equip the existing ones, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Because you can see that people are scampering now, resorting to all forms of means to avoid and to get rid of what? To get out of this quagmire that we're all in. People are resorting to spiritual means. People are resorting to herbal and what, if you like, uh, traditional measures. Because that's, that goes back to the point of lack of trust in the governments. So I don't think that the pandemic has taught us a lot. We've been doing too much of talking. The PTF um, addresses the press press often, but what exactly is coming out of it? This brings me to the point of where is the National Orientation Agency? Once upon a time in Nigeria, there was an agency called MAMSA. Almost everybody knew MAMSA and what it was doing. I'm not aware that there's any campaign that there is a sing-along or there is a phrase or there is a concept that everybody is speaking about on account of the coronavirus. If anything, we're just people are making skits and cracking jokes out of it. And that's because the National Orientation Agency is not in the forefront of informing the people and enlightening the people. And that's why there's so much disbelief in town. I was watching a feature on your station, what, about two days ago, where you were asking people if they were going to get the vaccine. You could see the extent of disbelief that people don't even accept that there is a virus. So as far as they're concerned, the government has just created an avenue to what embezzle funds again. Okay, okay. Um, final question. You know, I, I, I want your thoughts on um, the Nigerian government uh, being able to take responsibility for the life of every Nigerian. Um, I, I, I want your thoughts on if we have anything like that here. And when I say take responsibility, it is because if you hear stories of people who have survived COVID-19, um, you know, of course, um, through being on admission, being on oxygen, being on ventilators, um, it's always a very, very, very pathetic story of what they experience in our government hospitals and even in the private hospitals. Um, do you think that we might get to a point, you know, where the government, you know, is held completely accountable for its failure to ensure that we have a healthcare system that can at least reduce the death rate? Um, from news reports this morning, there's 22 more deaths that have been recorded in the last 24 hours. Okay, sadly, I think you have been living too much in that part of our constitution that says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary responsibility of governments. I think that's where it starts and that's where it ends. Um, there's, again, very little trust in governments and its policies. When governments are buying cutlery every year, or at least budgeted for cutlery every year. So the question that comes to mind is, do you, in your house, in my house, do you buy cutlery every year? A fraction, all of those line items in the budgets that are silly, for want of a better word, if those things are expended on the more critical sectors of the economy, we will be making some progress. So. I don't think that anybody believes that much in the health system. It was good PR for the Lagos state government because at the inception of the crisis, they did manage it well and they got the support of the people, which is not a difficult thing because when people see the genuineness and they see that you're making good efforts, the support will come. There was COVID. COVID did quite well to support the government, but see what happened after the NSARS protest. Palliatives were being looted, palliatives that were donated by COVID. So I think that um, resort to self-help, um, herbal measures, but most importantly, obeying the guidelines is what people should do. And I think that, again, the orientation agency should be seated next to officials of the NCDC and the Ministry of Health, creating campaigns in local languages as much as possible.
right. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts uh, on the news. Uh, well, I think another update is that uh, the president has signed an executive order that all who basically criminalizing uh, the non-use of face masks face, yeah. and that if you're not wearing your face mask, you'll be fined, you'll be jailed. The, the police has said things like this before. I have no idea what they intend to do to make it different this time, but we can only, you know, just watch and see. So thank you very much for your time well, and thoughts. Well, it's a, it's a good step that the president has taken that, but the president should also lead by example. How many times have you seen the president wearing a mask? The current United States president is seen wearing a mask almost all the time. So there's leadership by example. Demonstrate what you want the people to do. People are role modeled by examples that can be seen, not, not examples that are uttered, not verbal examples, not threats. Yes, right. Thank you, Ginny Benson. Um, for your thanks time. a lot. Uh, the question was, how many times have you seen the president wear a mask? You know, but it probably should be, how many times have you seen the president <laughs> at all? <laughs> Uh, thanks for your thoughts. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be speaking on former Ghanaian president, who, of course, was late to rest yesterday, uh, John Jerry Rollins. Um, we'll be back after this.